this. Your, your first book about Christian Zionism was uh, the first reference to Christian Zionism. One of the first references, yes. yes. It came out in uh, around 2004. It's been published in Arabic, in Farsi, by IRIB. Uh, and it deals with the historical roots of the movement, uh, its theological agenda, it, you know, its, its distinctive uh, beliefs, and then its political strategy to turn uh, those convictions into reality. So I, I show, for example, how um, th there's a very clear, very simple political strategy. The first is, if you believe that the Jews are God's chosen people, you will, uh, you will support the Jews. You will defend Israel. You will target those critical of Israel. So you campaign uh, politically in the White House, the Senate, Congress, Parliament on behalf of Israel. If you believe that the Jews are God's chosen people and that God gave them the land of the Middle East, then you will support their return. You will fund the return of Jews from Russia, for example, to Israel. If you believe God gave the Jews the West Bank, the Golan, Jordan, then you will encourage the settlement movement. So you have Christian organizations that encourage churches to adopt a settlement, to fund a settlement, a Jewish settlement in the occupied territories. Um, at the moment, the only country in the world that recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel is Israel. No other country in the world recognizes Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. There are no embassies in Jerusalem. All the embassies are in Tel Aviv. There is one embassy in Jerusalem, the Christian embassy. And um, so there is a campaign to get the United States to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. How do you do that? You simply move the US embassy to Jerusalem. And if the US moves its embassy to Jerusalem, everyone else will do the same and de facto Jerusalem becomes capital. So there are Christian organizations lobbying Congress to move the embassy to Jerusalem. The, the, the legislation has been passed on at least three occasions. Um, the funding has been allocated, the building has been identified, but three successive presidents have refused to sign the legislation. So it's failed. Um, the uh, Zionist lobby the religious Zionist lobby wants to see the temple rebuilt. The problem is the Haram al-Sharif, the Dome of the Rock, is in the way. And so you find Christian groups campaigning with Jewish settlers to destroy the Dome of the Rock in order to rebuild the Jewish temple. So um, in, its, uh, in its extreme form, Christian Zionism is very provocative. It is apocalyptic. It is uh, very fundamentalist in a, in a, in a military sense, uh, very little different to ISIS or Al-Qaeda in terms of what it's prepared to support. We talked about the ap apocalypse uh, and the fact that the, these events that are happening in the Middle East, um, they also are very much in the same plan as the big Middle East plan with the, the, the Jewish state of Israel as being the dominant power. Um, what do you think is, will be the result of, of the West continuing to support uh, this attitude uh, of, of, of domination in other, other ways in the same region which has already seen the presence of all these, co these countries? Well, in every generation for hundreds if not thousands of years there have been people who held to an apocalyptic theology. Um, so it's not something new that extremism that believes that um, they will bring about God's will through violence or through force uh, is sadly an aberration in all three monotheistic faiths. Um, uh, one of the leading Jewish uh, settlers, uh, Zionists, uh, Gershon Salomon says, um, uh, we must have a war uh, uh, the Messiah will not come by himself, we must bring him by fighting. Now that's the, that's the, that was the position of the zealots in the first century. They believed that as they fought, God would vindicate them. It's not that dissimilar to many of the uh, fundamentalist groups in the Middle East today. They believe God is on their side, rather than asking, am I on God's side? Am I following his revealed will in the scriptures, or am I 
using God as an excuse to further my political aims. I mean, my concern is that the Jewish people are going to suffer as a consequence of, uh, if you like, the West perpetuating this uh, conflict in the Middle East. We talk about the two-state solution. America, Europe insists it supports the two-state solution, but we vetoed attempts of the Palestinians to gain recognition in the United Nations. If we believe in the two states, why won't we support the two states? That, that, you know, that inconsistency is perpetuating the violence and I believe ultimately the Jews will suffer the consequence of that. And those that are astute recognize that within Christian Zionism, the Jews are act three in a four act play. They're not there in the end because we've had this great battle of Armageddon and only the followers of Jesus are saved and everyone else is destroyed. You know, if I was Jewish, would I really want those kinds of people supporting me? Because I realize they're using me for their, their theology, not mine.